the first day I entered, I probably handled like 10 to 15 calls um, from college coaches around the country. Um, and I mean, KU was actually the very first one that I got. So that was a very, very surreal moment. Like Dewan's basketball IQ is through the roof. So um, just to be out there with somebody like him, um, understand, you know, the role I got to play for the team. Um, but, you know, one thing I think I can specifically help on is, you know, shooting, obviously. Um, I shot the ball at almost a 40% clip on, on high volume shots as well. So Dad used to tell me all the time. He used to tell me all the time. Son, don't worry about the mules. Just load the wagon. College football tees, college basketball tees, whatever you need, Mercury has you covered with the best merch out there. We're talking about high quality clothing, inexpensive, and the best part is I have a 15% discount for everybody who goes and gets some right now. Use the code below, hit the link in the description, and go get your merch now. Use the code to get 15% off. What are you waiting on? Go do it. Chris, super pumped to be back in Kansas City this summer. I'm looking for some new spots to eat. I've heard great things about Modern Market for my family and friends. What do you know about it? Mitch, Modern Market is the easiest way to eat healthy in Kansas City. It's at 83rd and Corinth. I've tried just about the whole entire menu. I ate it for a week straight. Their pizzas, their Neapolitan pizza, their pepperoni pizza, everything has been absolutely fantastic. I highly encourage you to go on the website right now, modernmarket.com, and check out their menu. Again, it's at 83rd and Corinth. It is right in the heart of Prairie Village, Kansas. What about Modern Market allows you to eat healthy and eat clean? They make it taste good. I mean, it's simple as that. You know, I'm scared of anything green. I like my stuff red and blue. Everything I've had there has been absolutely fantastic. It really satisfies me, even though I do love the greasy stuff. You heard it here first, folks. Drop in at Modern Market and let them know Chris and Mitch sent you. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Rock Talk Unplugged. I'm co-host Chris Tehan, obviously here with Mitch Lightfoot. And we have a huge guest for you guys today, the newest addition to the Kansas Jayhawks, Zeke Mayo. Zeke, how you doing today? Doing fantastic. Zeke, welcome to the podcast. Super stoked to have you on. Obviously, one of the big new pickups for the Jayhawks. Uh, longtime Lawrence, Kansas person. You grew up there. Tell us a little bit about your experience growing up in Lawrence, being around KU, and, and what it's meant to you to come back to KU. Yeah, I mean, growing up, obviously, uh, family was, you know, huge KU fans. And I, I mean, we tuned into the LA National Championship and then um, obviously, I was a freshman in, in college when you guys won in 2022. But um, I mean, just overall, um, you know, been a lifelong fan of, of Kansas basketball and um, just love the tradition, love the standard that's set here at, at KU. And um, I'm just blessed to be a part of it. I know I've seen a bunch of uh, pictures of you from your time in, Lo in Lawrence, whether that be with Devin Neal and Andrew Wiggins. Talk about you've gone to the camps. You've been a part of the, the KU family. What is that? What does the experience mean to you to come back to KU? Yeah, I mean, it's it's honestly surreal, like just understanding, you know, growing up and um, especially just me and Dev, period. Like we grew up in Lawrence all of our lives. And um, I mean, we dreamed of, you know, putting on these uniforms uh, to compete at the highest level. Um, you know, now that the opp opportunity has presented itself, um, you know, it just felt right to take it. And um, I'm really looking forward to it. And you guys, you guys both have a huge opportunity to play pivotal roles in some historic Kansas basketball and football teams this year. I mean, is that, that has to be some somewhat of force full circle. And he, they brought him in on your visit and brought another one of your friends in on your visit. Like, how was that? Was it just felt like when you got into the building with those two around you, knowing you guys could do something special? Was that kind of the ceiling deal, or did Coach Self have to say what's up, stud, a couple times and and uh, <laughs> he promise you some things on that on the outside? Yeah, no, I mean, it was that like it definitely was a, a persuading factor um, just having him and him and my other boy, Cole Mondi, on the visit. Um, just understand, you know, we grew up together. So to uh, have this chance to, you know, come back to school, come back home, just be with those guys and compete um, for Kansas is incredible. But, you know, at the same time, they both understood, you know, it was my decision ultimately. So um, they were going to just allow me to do my thing. But, you know, they had to put a little bug in my ear and, and try to talk me into it. And, you know, eventually... You know, it, it felt like, you know, they they kind of persuaded me a little bit. But um, I think, you know, Coach Self had the, the words of affirmation to, you know, give me give me to come home. Zeke, with uh, the transfer portal, everybody's talking about it. It's all people can talk about these days. What does the experience of entering the transfer portal actually look like for those that are on the outside looking in? And especially yeah. someone who's as big as you. I mean, you had a great year and people kind of figured that, 
early on in the year, Kansas fans were tweeting at you, tweeting at Devin, being like, hey, come home, just leave halfway through the season. So is that something where you're a high-level recruit, probably a top 10 transfer right now? Was that a lot different experience than being out of high school where you're kind of not really on a ton of people's radars? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the the thing now, um, especially that, you know, you can transfer and kind of play immediately instead of having to sit out a year, um, I think it's a lot different for like high school kids and, and maybe JUCO players nowadays, just because you know the the coaches want to go after players who have that experience and have been in college for a few years. Um, but from my my point of view, I I mean the first day I entered, I probably handled like ten to fifteen calls um, from college coaches around the country, um, and I mean KU was actually the very first one that I got, so that was a very very surreal moment. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's an exciting moment. Um, not every, you know, kid gets to experience this kind of stuff. And, you know, like you said, when all these college coaches want you, they preach the same kind of stuff. Um, but there's just, you know, a certain level of, like, a personal connection um, that you feel you have with some coaches more than others. Um, you know, that's kind of what ultimately made the de- make the decision. Who, who gave you that first call from Kansas? Was it Coach Self? Was it Coach Rob, KT? Who, who was the first person to contact you from KU? Yeah, so Coach Case was actually the one that called me, but uh, Coach Self did get – he was on the phone as well. So <laughs> it, it was fun. Zeke, then another big topic that people talk about, obviously NIL is kind of the name of the game these days. What does the NIL look like for somebody that's averaging damn near 20 points a game at, at a school like SCSU? And what is it? And what do you expect it to look like coming into Kansas? Um, yeah, I mean, at a mid-major, you know, NIL is – Probably, I mean, obviously not as big as a, a high major like KU, um, but I mean they're gonna throw at you what they can. Um, but I've never been like really big on NIL. I'm not, you know, in it for the money, in it for the, you know, whatever the perks. Um, I, I just I like to play basketball, so um, I chose to go back to school. I, I mean, I was offered, you know, a ton tons of money to leave after my sophomore year, but turned that down because, you know, I put into perspective of you know what situation I would be in and what would set me up. Um, to be, you know, successful in the future. So, uh, I mean, NIL is not really a, a big part of, you know, who I am, but um, if a school, um, you know, like KU is going to, you know, offer whatever they want to offer, um, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to have that opportunity. So, um, I mean, I'm thankful. And that, that's what you kind of want to hear. I, I, I hate nowadays when people are coming into the portal. We already had the AJ store thing kind of come out where they were, he was like, my, my opening price is a million. Come, come get me. Was, yeah. was it a lot different this year where some of the first conversations you would have with coaches, assistant coaches, whoever would call you from the school would start talking numbers right away on the phone, just trying to kind of buy you away from the University of Kansas or buy you away from other schools? Yeah, I mean, they wouldn't really mention a specific number, but, you know, the NIO factor did come in and they were trying to persuade me and telling me, you know, we can get you what you want or we can take care of you, take care of your family, um, just that kind of stuff. But there were never really any numbers mentioned. What, uh, how many schools reached out to you as soon as you hit the portal? Obviously, like you're a big name like yourself, uh, a big scorer. Scorers are obviously somebody that are very, Uh, very desired these days in college basketball. How many schools reached out to you? Yeah, so initially, I think on the first day, it was about, I think I counted 13, 13 to 15. Um, And then after that, I think I reached about 22 to 25 schools. That's got to be overwhelming a little bit, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I – when you know you're on the phone with one coach and then your phone starts ringing again, you can't hang up the phone and then answer the other one. So you got to, you know, go through the entire phone call. But – um, I mean, my, my dad also handled tons of phone calls for me. Um, he's very you know professional with that kind of stuff. And um, I also had my AAU coach, um, LJ Goolsby, who's now coaches that run GMC. Yeah. But, um, you know, they were, they were helping me a lot and handling, you know, some of my stuff just in case, you know, I, I didn't, you know, bring up the, the stuff that was, you know, most important. What, uh, what was your first conversation with Coach Self like? <laughs> Uh, it was very, very personal. Like he kind of touched on a personal connection type type thing, um, you know, just to kind of get me to understand, you know, how bad, um, you know, Kansas really wanted me and um, needed me, I guess you could say. Um, he kind of, sure he kind of, <laughs> you know, just touched on the fact that they were lacking, you know, shooting and scoring ability outside of obviously Hunter and, and, uh, and, and Kev, but 
Um, you know, he want, he just, you know, told me what he wanted me to come in and do. And, um, you know, what, what they had to offer was probably, you know, something I wasn't going to find anywhere else. Speaking about that a little bit, what was it that he envisions for you? And what's that role that he wants you to play for this next year's team? Yeah, I mean, he just wants me to come in and be my be the be the player I know know how to be and how I have been the past three years. Um, obviously, um, you know, scoring has been my my ability, but um, whatever role he wants me to play within the within the system of the offense, um, I, I'm going to come in and do that and um, hopefully help us help us win a national championship. Have Have you thought about the defensive side of the ball yet at the University of Kansas? Because that is that is a coaching point. I mean, you're going to get in there in that first six months or that first three months before the season starts, probably up until February, is going to be all trying to figure out the defensive side of the ball. Is that something you've kind of started watching uh, during film or some other things? Uh, because we, we run a pretty complex defense. Whereas we bump the roll man on the two side and kind of X out there. And if you don't play high-level basketball on the defensive side of the ball, it can, it can kind of get away from you touches-wise and get in your head. Is that something you've, you've been focusing on? Because there, there's a lot of pressure on the defensive side of the ball, especially in a guard-heavy Big 12. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the Big 12 is obviously one of the most physical leagues, you know, there is in the country. So, um, of course, I've been paying attention. I watched, you know, a lot of March Madness. So I'm just kind of watching how, you know, every team um, guards the ball, you know, help side, stuff like that, um, guards the pick and roll. And, you know, when, when you have guys like KJ who can switch onto a guard, I mean, it's, it's going to be very, very tough, especially for, you know, someone like me who's, you know, not as big, not as strong, not as fast. But, um, hopefully that'll develop over time, obviously, with Coach Ramsey. But, um, yeah, I mean, I understand, you know, it's going to be a tough task. But, um, I mean, I'm a basketball player, so I'm just I'm willing to work and, and get better at it. I, uh, a lot of people like talking about uh, offense, and I want to go back that way. I want to talk to you a little bit about how you think your game can translate from the mid-major to the high-major level. Obviously, there's, a like you said, an increase in size, speed, quickness. What are you doing to make sure that your, your game is going to, to translate to the Big 12? Yeah, just um, obviously getting stronger and getting faster. Um, just working, you know, hard at those two kinds of things and um, just becoming, you know, a, a floor general alongside DeWan. Before we get back to Mitch and Chris, I got to tell you guys about the newest sponsor of the Rob Chalk Unplugged podcast, Prize Fix. Prize Fix is the best way to fire on sports. And my favorite part is the community place, playing alongside people like Meek Mill and Sugar Sean O'Malley. You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Fix community each week. Conference tournaments are here, which means the biggest moments in college basketball are getting closer. Be a part of the action on Prize Fix for both men's and women's college basketball. Prize Prize Fix even offers injury insurance so that your entries can stay in even if one of your players gets injured. For basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player projection won't count against you and the rest of your entry stays live. I mean, that is looking out for the users. Prize Fix is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. And on Prize Fix, you pick players instead of teams. So if you feel like you know sports pretty well, you can make tons of money. Download the Prize Fix app today and use code ROCKCHALK for a first time deposit match up to $100. That's code ROCKCHALK. R O C K C H A L K Rock Chalk for a 100% deposit match up to $100. The link is also in the description for you to click for a 100% deposit match up to $100 with code Rock Chalk. Go play Prize Fix today. Like Dewan's basketball IQ is through the roof. So um, just to be out there with somebody like him, um, understand you know the role I got to play for the team. Um, but you know one thing I think I can specifically help on is you know shooting. Obviously, um, I shot the ball at almost a 40% clip on on high volume shots mm -hmm. as well. So. Um, just honestly, just pay, just you know, getting getting a perspective from him and and just kind of you know working on our game together and working on playing alongside him and then obviously um, whoever we have down in the post, whether Hunter comes back or you know whoever we get um, in the transfer portal or if you know somebody comes off the bench from last year and, and gets that starting role. But um, yeah, I mean, just I mean, offense is offense is going to come. Um, yeah. I'm not really worried about that. I feel like you know offense is just. Uh, my my strongest ability, um, but you know, like like Chris said, defense is gonna you know pay dividends. And, and I, I don't know if you've watched a ton of. I mean, you've watched a ton of Kansas basketball. You look at these guard heavy teams that Kansas has had. Whether we do get Hunter back or not, it will obviously change the way we play. But playing with Dewan Harris in a four out kind of weave, find your find your spots in an offense is a ton of fun. You look at guys like Christian Brown, like Ochai Baji, like Jalen Wilson who are guys that can go create off the bounce, but also 
having the ability to have Dewan kind of play off of you guys was that something that you kind of thought of when you when you decided on Kansas that he's he's made every wing around him that can score whether you're playing the two or the three kind of flourish whether you guys get out in transition or whether he's sitting there getting ball screens skipping the ball over it's uh, it's really impressive I'm 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 excited for you because I was I, Mitch mentioned I just started thinking about it was that something though that was going through your mind when you're thinking about Kansas yeah of course I mean obviously. Um... You know, want to play alongside a, a guy like that who can, you know, dish out six, seven assists a night. Um, and I mean, that just means, you know, more more opportunities for me on the floor, whether we're spread out, um, whether that's back cuts, you know, he's going to find you. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm ready to play with him. I know he's got the, the IQ of, of the highest of the highest. So, um, you know, I'm ready to get out there and, and hoop. I wanted to ask you a little bit about your time back at South Dakota State. What was your biggest game you had in college so far? Uh, from a point standpoint? Uh, definitely the, the, the 41. I had my sophomore year at home against uh, North Dakota State and, and Grant Nelson, who actually uh, plays at Alabama now. Yep. And that was, a, that was a pretty big game. I think uh, KU fans are excited <clears throat> to have somebody that has the ability to, to score at that level. Uh, I think this past year, you look back on it, we, uh, we struggled at times to, instead of throwing it inside every time, we need something from the outside. And, and when Kevin was hurt, that's something that, that hurt us, and I think you're going to give us the, the opportunity to, to really expand from multiple different levels. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, I mean, obviously that game was, was very, very intense, very close. Um, but, you know, that was just a game where, you know, my instincts kind of kicked in, and um, I just, you know, I had to take over that game if I wanted to win. Um, and, you know, shots were falling, so when they're falling, you know, you continue to shoot, and uh, they, were, they were going in that night. And that, that's, I think, I, that's the most exciting part for me when I watch your game. Because you look at the 2022 team, and we had a lot of plays off of assists. Like, that's how we got a lot of our points. That's how we did it this year as well. We were, I think, the highest rated team on assists per points or something, per basket made, something like that. But we did not have a player like we had in 2022, like a Remy Martin, who could come and give us a spark where, hey, yeah, we aren't playing well. We aren't passing the ball well. They're putting pressure on us defensively. Give it to him with 10 seconds left on the clock. Let him go to work. And if he gets in, you get in a rhythm, I mean, the, you could carry a game out. And that, that's something we definitely didn't have. Um, and you did it against good competition. I think the one thing we haven't really touched on is the fact that NIL and the transfer portal and things like that have changed the landscape of college basketball. The talent is way more spread out. And you're having people that are going from high majors down to mid majors to go play who are uber, uber talented, but just didn't have the opportunity they had when they committed to an Alabama or an Illinois at the beginning, didn't play the freshman year. Like, hey, I want to get tick, be able to go up. And so I feel like the talent level has has widened a lot throughout college basketball. Has that something you noticed? I mean, you got there. What was your freshman year? 2019, 2020? 21. 21. Okay, so you noticed it pretty much right away. It's like the, the, the physicality, the speed, just the way that these guys are able to score. You're looking at – you look at UConn, you look at Alabama this year. They're, three of their starting five of all those teams played mid-major basketball. Is that yeah. something that you kind of looked at? I mean, you obviously after your sophomore year, you talk about maybe leaving a little bit. But was that something that came to your mind when you started playing well? You're like, okay, maybe I do get an opportunity to go somewhere bigger and have my skills be shown on a larger stage. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's always um, it always crosses your mind, you know, as a mid-major player and, you know, you feel like you're one of the top in the country um, and you're displaying it on a nightly basis. Um, you obviously feel like, you know, you can go somewhere and, and still, you know, do what you're do what you're doing. But you also got to understand the reality of things where there's players who have been there for multiple years and um, who are also at the top of their class. So, <coughs> role might not be the same but you know you're definitely you're definitely going to go there and, and look to produce and you've played in allen fieldhouse before as well i mean you guys from free state and lawrence high school play in allen fieldhouse what was the aura around that even if it wasn't a kansas basketball game but kind of playing i mean you're right down the road from allen fields the most historic place how was that kind of the pressure was it different in that game even though it was a high school game and not completely 6,800 or 16,800 people in that arena. Oh, 300, whatever it is. It's a, it's a, Dude, come on, you were there for how many years? Hey, I went there for five years, but my, 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 I've been out for two now, and I think I, I'm forgetting things. <laughs> no, um, I mean, the high school the high school level is just a lot different, but, um, I mean, we brought the, we almost brought the entire city out for that, for that game, so. 
um, just the atmosphere, you know, that a high school a high school game can bring in Allen Fieldhouse. You know, the seats weren't filled like they are for a Kansas game, obviously, but you know, everything's like super, you know, condensed and, and packed in on a lower level. So um, it was a, it was an incredible atmosphere. You know, we played a great game. Um, it was a rival game, so it, it was a lot of fun. Speaking of wild atmospheres, you've been in college for a while. What's been the wildest atmosphere you've played in, whether that be at home or away? What's been that craziest atmosphere? Um, I'd say go, we went down to Bama my sophomore year and my and my freshman year as well. And those those cats get rowdy down there. Alabama is probably one of the toughest places to play in the country. No doubt. What are you looking forward to the most? I mean – whether it's late night, whether it's the first Big 12 game of the season, what are you looking forward to the most of, of, of experiencing an Allen Fieldhouse? I mean, you can get confident right now and say Big 12 championship game uh, for the regular season title, but what, what, is that, what is that kind of going through your mind for those games? You talk about Alabama being a rowdy place. Come play Texas Tech at home when you guys are one game ahead of them in the Big 12 and you only have two or three games left. I mean, that's a different experience. Is that something that you you really – is there one specific thing that you're really looking forward to right now? Um, I mean, yeah, obviously, um, you know, just getting an opportunity to play in Allen Fieldhouse, but also, you know, games like you said, like the, the tight knit where the league is, you know, super close and um, you got you to gotta win. Otherwise, you know, the, the share could go away, the outright could go away. Um, but, yeah, just, just competing and – and get an opportunity to play and, and, and you know, display my, my skill level, um, I think, at the highest level is what I'm most excited for. But just the, the, just, just the games and, um, you know, honestly, practices as well, just getting to compete with the guys um, every night. Zeke, were you recruited by, by Kansas coming out of high school at all? Um, just a smidge. Um, not a whole lot. They, they, they were in the gym a couple times um, during our summer AAU tournaments. But, um I mean, never really anything super, super serious. What uh, what would be your advice to somebody whose hometown team maybe had looked over them a little bit and uh, they had worked their ass off to get back to to get to that level? What what is your advice for somebody, a high school kid coming up in the future? What's your advice to them? Um, just keep working. Honestly, um, you know, don't don't ever leave any doubt. Um, you know, it's it takes it takes a lot of courage to you know continue to you know if you feel like you're you feel like you're, you know, the best player of where you come from and, you know, whatever school doesn't, you know, give you that, that opportunity. Um, just continue to work, continue to, you know, develop your craft. And, um, I mean, if, if that opportunity does present itself again, um, obviously it's whoever's decision. But, you know, the most important thing is just understanding your worth, um, understanding what you come from and um, just setting yourself up for success. Did, did that leave a sour taste in your mouth, though? That you're, I mean, you're down the street. You're a couple miles away. Did was that something that you kind of thought back on? That Kansas never really gave you that much of a look when you were going into college. Is that something you had a chip on your shoulder going into uh, your career? Um, I mean, I want to say yeah, but at the same time, it was like kind of a reality thing. I don't think I personally, I don't think I was ready for you know Big Twelve um, coming out of high school. If I'm being honest, I wasn't wasn't the biggest, wasn't the strongest at all. Um, but, you know, at the same time, God, God created this path for me for a reason, and um, it's led me back home. So, um, I mean, it, it was probably, it feels like it was destined to be. That takes, a, that takes like, a lot, of, a lot of gumption to say that because I feel like in, in the world we live in today, with the transfer portal we live in today, everybody feels like they're entitled to so much. And, and you went somewhere and you worked your ass off, and last year you averaged almost 19 points a game, and, and now you're going to a, a high, the highest of the high majors – with an opportunity to win a national championship, and you're going to be playing on the the brightest stages in front of the biggest crowds, with an opportunity with an opportunity to win it at the highest level. So I, I commend you for that. That's that's uh that that it's impressive. All right. Right. So let, let's get let's get a little bit into kind of your early years in Lawrence, and what is your like first fond memory of the University of Kansas? Whether it's you and Devin going to the KU basketball camps, or what was your first time where you're like, okay, yeah, th- th- it's cool being down the street. Yeah, um, we were actually at my house watching the watching KU play at Ohio State. I think it was was it was it the Final Four? Either the Final Four or the Elite Eight when uh, Aaron Kraft and, and Jerry. Oh Smith yeah, played. yeah. I was I was at the game in person. That was a fun one. Yeah, so that was probably the the most memorable um, you know moment I've had um, for KU basketball. Just 
watching that game. And then, you know, as soon as the buzzer sounds, I, I go outside and I hear the sirens and, you know, all that kind of stuff to let people know, you know, we made it. And um, it was just, it was just a good experience. Is there somebody that played on KU in the past that you think your game will remind KU fans of a little bit? Um, honestly, like, I feel like I'm a less athletic Ben McLemore. And I mean, it's, it's you're pretty athletic, athletic though. I've I've had a chance to play with you. I think you're I think you're more athletic than you're than you're giving yourself. I mean, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a decent athlete. I'm not you know I'm not the bouncy type of athlete, but you know I'm I'm a little shifty and I, and I can move. But uh, you know the bounce hasn't always been my my strength. But that that was that was one of my favorite players on, on the team growing up and, and watching him play. Um, but yeah, he he was a special talent when he was here. And that that was a, that's a really good comparison. Because I mean, Ben was one of those guys where he could he could just get hot one game and he's hitting step back threes. People are going under, and then he can get to the basket on you. He kind of scored at all three levels, yeah. but yeah. it wasn't like he had to go out and force it every single night. It was just hey, when you, when they needed a bucket, Ben McLemore somehow was was getting it done, and he was a yeah. ton of fun to watch. That was kind of that was my era of college of Kansas basketball too. So. That was a good pull by you. I'll, I'll say you got some. Kansas I, was, there I wasn't one. expecting that. One. I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't <laughs> expecting that one. That was a, that was a really good one. That was a good one. Wow, man! I grew up. I grew up here for 21 years, man. I know, <laughs> I know how you basketball. <laughs> so Zeke, everyone's dream is to play, obviously, in the NBA after college. Uh, what? Obviously, you declared for the M- NBA draft. What does that ex- experience look like? How do you do that? And uh, what what are your plans moving forward with that? Yeah. Um, Obviously, um, it's a it's a very exciting moment. Um, but throughout the throughout the season, it, it kind of you know hits you a little bit. And um, I, I ended up I haven't signed with an agent yet, but um, I kind of been talking to one guy who I, I feel like I'm going to go with here eventually. Um, mm-hmm. And so basically, what they do is they just kind of give you feedback on on what NBA teams are saying throughout, whether it's throughout your um, season or, or at the end. Um, but Basically, you sign some paperwork for the NBA, um, send that through, um, get some feedback, whatever. And then uh, I, I ended up declaring. So basically what they want to happen is as soon as your season is over, you travel to wherever the, the agency is based out of. You work out um, for you know maybe a couple weeks, a month. Um, and then the NBA draft combine is obviously probably soon after you start working out. So there's the regular NBA combine and the G League combine. Um, and, you know, if you're if you're top top of the top in the G League combine, then you eventually get invited to the NBA combine um, and, and you go from there. And then obviously the NBA draft um, in, in, in June or July, I can't remember when it is, but um, it, it's it's an exciting moment just to be able to say, you know, I'm, I plan, uh, plan to do this and, uh, it's just another step in my career. And I don't know if you, if they're allowed to do this, but do you have like, I don't, I'm not going to say NBA teams reach out to you, but when you're getting done with your season, like, is there an opportunity? Like, do you kind of know that's coming up or is it just like faith that, Hey, I think I'm good enough. Like, let me put my name in the draft. Or is there some kind of process around that? Yeah. So uh, what basically happened with me was my agent kind of, you know, got some feedback from some teams and, and they wanted me to come and work out for them when, whenever the time was, Time was appropriate. Um, obviously, before the draft is the best time to do it. So, um, they he had like a list of teams that wanted me to come work out, um, and then just kind of get feedback from there. And um, they'll kind of tell you, you know, whether they think they'll draft you or or if there's even a chance. Um, whether that's you know late first round, late second round, early second round. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how the process was. Zeke, seeing guys like Devontae Graham, Frank Mason, Jalen Wilson, Ochai, those guys that have developed their game and come back and, and their decision to come back to college and play for Coach Self for another year has developed their game into an opportunity for them to play, to be high draft picks. Does that give you confidence coming to Kansas? I mean, yeah, for sure. Just understanding, you know, the, the handful of guys that have come out of Kansas, um, it, it makes me feel comfortable with the, with the decision that I've made because obviously I could – I mean, I could go to to the NBA draft and just say, forget it, I don't want to come back to college and and not get drafted, um, be a late second round draft pick. But, you know, ultimately I made the decision that I feel like, you know, Coach Self and and the staff can, you know, develop me into a first rounder, you know, with somebody like they did for Ochai and and CB and Jalen. Like those guys, you know, put in the work for, you know, however many years, three to four um, and, and, 
you know, they worked hard enough to put themselves in a position to, you know, become a lottery pick or, or a late first rounder. Did, did, and I, I know we talked about NIL a little bit. You said you, you, that's not really been an emphasis point for you at all. I'm not saying that you need the money, but I know there's people in certain situations. Did that play any role in you deciding that maybe coming back to college was a good idea, that you're allowed to get a good chunk of change? And obviously, KU got, has a big NIL, NIL, uh, I wouldn't say endowment, but whatever you want to call it, good NIL base. Is that something that played a role into you deciding, hey, I'm going to come back and, and, and go to another school? Yeah, of course. Because, I mean, you know, just getting the opportunity to, to play at home is one thing. Um, but also, you know, whether – I don't know how much, you know, they're going to send yeah. pay me, whatever. But, yeah, yeah. But, there's no reason to know, but there's there's some cash in it. Right, exactly. So just getting the opportunity to understand that I can play at home, play in front of my family, my friends, and then also, you know, be I'm a 21 year old and I could possibly be making, you know, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, and that's you know enough money to take care of not only myself but you know my family as well. So, um, you know, that opportunity might not have presented itself um, for the league. One hundred percent. I think sure. that's I think that's so cool, and I think that it's a, a net positive for college athletics because it allows guys to, to come back instead of making a hasty decision to, to maybe go make it in the NBA where they can end up on a, on a two-way deal or an Exhibit 10 in the G League and, and not make the money that they think they're going to make and then end up playing uh, somewhere where they're, they're not making what they could have made back in college. Yeah. Is there, so let's stay on the NIL a little bit and let's do some hypotheticals because it's always nice because NIL was never around when we were there and so – our first thought was like, okay, what is the most ideal deal I could do? Like me and Mitch were talking and there was a couple, there was a couple brands that we wanted to reach out to, or we wanted to do like, Hey, like have the bowl or the Hawk be in, have an NIL deal with them and go bartend there or something like that. Has there been an NIL deal that now you have this big platform that you're like, Hey, this will be the cool one. Um, you know, honestly, I've been trying to pursue like a, there's not really a local one, but like a Hellman's or, Duke's man. Oh, yeah. This is the last name. Like, obviously, that's that'd be the biggest one for me. But um, as far as like local businesses, I mean, there's really there's a ton out there. Um, you know, Lawrence is filled with you know small businesses that I would love to work with, and, and you know, I think it's potential. I think it's super cool for you because being a, a hometown guy, not only a Kansas yeah. basketball player, but you were a Lawrence basketball player. I think you're gonna have a ton of small business opportunities to work with them and and promote small business. Uh, one NIL deal I think that could be a potential for you is I saw the, the Mayo t-shirts that you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are iconic. You gotta, you gotta get together with, with Charlie Hustle. They got, they, they've done some pretty great t-shirts over the, the last couple of years. And I think that one's going to be a instant classic sell like hotcakes. Uh, Zeke Mayo may become a billionaire off of just those t-shirts alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We will definitely put something in the work. I dropped those my freshman year. So uh, we'll definitely have to bring those back. Hey, th this video right here, the people Mercury clip it, send it, send it to our boys at Charlie hustle and let's make the, the yeah. Zeke Mayo t-shirts happen. Well, and then, and then let me and Mitch, I mean, we obviously didn't bring up the idea, but hey, we're, we're facilitating this one. Send us, send us a little check back. Come on, give us a bounce back on that bad boy. See, is there anything that you wanted to say to Jayhawk Nation as a whole about yourself, what they can look forward to for you, with you playing for the Jayhawks? Um, I mean, you know, I'm ready to, I'm ready to come in and, and do what we need to do and do what I need to do in order to help us win, you know, a handful of games. You know, I'm looking to play on the biggest stage in San Antonio in, in 2025. So um, I'm really looking forward to, you know, being a part of Jayhawk, Jayhawk Nation and, um, you know, Rock Chop. Hey, what, what are your goals this year? I mean, obviously the goal as a common is to get to a national championship, but are there any personal goals that you kind of put into the forefront that you think about when you're going to train, when you're in those hard workouts where you don't want to finish it? Has there been something that you've been working towards outside of just being at Kansas and, and doing what you dreamed of your whole childhood? Yeah, I think uh, one of the most important things for me is just, you know, is continuing to be a leader. I'm, I'm going to be a senior next year, obviously, um, we're going to have a handful of, you know, veteran guys, but I've been, I've been in a leadership position for the past couple of years. And, um, you know, it's not very common for, you know, guys that come from a mid-major school to a, to a higher up, um, to, you know, have that vocal, that vocal aspect of the game. So, 
Um, you know, I'm going to continue to look at look to be a leader um, for our group, especially with the handful of younger guys that we got coming in, um, and just be a role model for them. Is there any Chris, former players that hit you up during your recruiting process? Like, is there has, has did CB reach out? I know Christian is he's very vocal about certain things, but is there anybody who's reached out to you outside of me and Mitch, obviously asking you if you you come on the podcast, but to kind of give you a little bit of advice or and say, hey, the phone the phone's open for you to give us a buzz if anything comes up. Yeah, for sure. CB definitely reached out. Um, yeah. I talked to I talked to uh, Sharon actually the other day as well. So oh really. Um, yeah, just having those two guys, um, two of the most successful players that have played here, um, obviously, was just it was it was really nice to know you know you have those kinds of people on your side. And I feel like that's pretty consistent around the fan base or around the the former players lately. I mean, you see, I think did CB tweet at you or I can't remember if, uh, but I see CB tweets at everybody. He reaches out to a lot of different people. We do have a very very close alumni uh, group. That I mean, I remember reaching out to certain players, seeing Toronto and, and uh, getting lunch with him or getting dinner with Brady when Brady was not a coach and just kind of walking talking to them about kind of how to handle the pressure. So that's something that I'm excited for you to get to experience. It, it helps me a lot as a player uh, mentally and physically, really, because, you know, you get you get beat up. And when your mental is not right, that physical body starts to, to, to wear down a lot. And I yeah. obviously wasn't in a position where I actually was on the court. You'll be playing a huge role. So that that uh, that pressure, those, those contacts, those people, they'll be around you the whole entire time you're at Kansas. And hopefully propel you to, to lead us to a to a national championship or at least to a final four. You gotta go down to San Antonio. Me and Mitch did it. And that was uh obviously New Orleans was a little bit better because we won down there. But San yeah. Antonio was a good place to go down and play. Yeah, I've never been so I definitely want to take a trip. I'll be hey, good time. the last year we had kind of a down year. The following year we won a national championship. The, there's no pressure on you at all uh that we had a down year so now this year uh, this year coming up, Zeke Mayo's got to lead us to the promised land and take us uh, back to the Final Four in a national championship. No pressure. I'm ready to do it, man. Chris, you want to wrap it up? Yeah, let's let's wrap it up. I mean, is there anything, Zeke, is there anything you want to talk about? Like, I mean, we, we use this as a platform sometimes. Like, we had uh, KJ on. He talked a little bit about kind of what he did off the court. Is there anything you want us to ask about, anything you feel like we missed? I think you guys covered, you know, everything, every aspect of every aspect of the game and, and what's, what I'm looking forward <laughs> For to. For sure. <laughs> if there's a question we need to ask, we ask. Yeah, yeah. That's no nice. doubt. All right, Chris, Zeke. Yeah, I got you. Zeke, thank you so much for coming on this year. I can't wait – or coming on today, I can't wait to see the Mayo T-shirts all around Charlie Hustle and see all the little kids running around. Uh, can't wait to see you in Allen Fieldhouse. I think this this year will be a ton of fun. I think the play style you'll bring to the court and the play style of our team will completely change. It will be a ton of fun to watch. Thank you so much for coming on. It was an honor to sit down and talk with you today. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me, man. Hey, and that concludes another episode of Rock Chalk Unplugged. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe to the YouTube. Good to see you guys. Rock Chalk, baby.